ABC was once the top deck in the game, but recently has fallen on hard times. So what happened to this archetype? I think the change was largely the hesitation of its players to evolve the deck as a reaction to the change in the meta. For example, this deck is an example of the most popular ABC build, kind of a skeleton of sorts, and you can see that it focuses on speed and XZ plays to increase the probability of summoning Dragon Buster as fast as possible. In the environment when ABCs was dominant, this speed was to its advantage, largely because Dragon Buster was such a beast on the field. However, now with Dridents and Paleozoics running around everywhere in the meta, with all of its interruptions, the one-dimensional speed aspect of ABC has run into problems dealing with this change. So, how do I run ABCs in an attempt to increase meta competitiveness? Overall, the core of ABC direct support is rather small, but important to cover. First, A Assault Core is the highest attacker among the three pieces of ABC, having a rather significant clearance from B, for there is a wide gap in efficacy between 1500 attack and 1900 attack. It also has a very useful union effect, which makes the equipped monster immune to opponent monster effects. I think a lot of people forget about the utility of this effect, especially in the context of attaching it to an ABC Dragon Buster, eliminating the ability of the opponent to use monster-based negation to stop ABC from doing its banish thing. While its graveyard effect is probably the worst of the bunch, it does have its uses during the mid-game, adding back an A, B, or C to either summon with Union Hanger on the field to create more advantage, or to discard with ABC's effect. While there are some designs that only run two copies, I like running three copies for this type of build. B Buster Drake is the middle ground combatant for the group, with 1500 attack and 1800 defense that can provide some utility on its own, but realistically it does provide the least utility among the three by itself. However, B really shines in its two other effects. The Union effect is probably the best among the three at restricting the options the opponent has at removing various monsters, especially ABC Dragon Buster, which can typically interrupt enough on its own to neutralize most options of removing it via monster effect if that monster is being placed on the field after Buster has been placed on the field. In fact, most of the time, an ABC Dragon Buster equipped with a Drake can frequently only be removed by a Kaiju for non-Paleozoic deck unless you run out of cards from your hand. The Graveyard effect is incredibly valuable in the first few turns of the duel at increasing the summoning probability of ABC as early as possible. However, not surprisingly though, its effect wanes as the duel goes on because it simply runs out of things to search. Again, three copies. C Crush Wyvern is the most defensive monster with only 1200 attack and 2000 defense, preventing most no tribute monsters from getting over it. Its union effect can either be very good Paleozoic's Cough Cough, or basically worthless, depending on what type of deck you're facing, and its back row complement. The graveyard effect is very nice in this build, because I run three copies of all three parts, and because Wyvern can summon an additional copy of itself from the hand. It is not just limited to A or B. True to its role as defender of the group, Wyvern helps both defend your life points as well as potentially speed the summons of ABC Dragon Buster. As said earlier, I run three copies. Torque Tune Gear can be an interesting tech card for this deck to open the door for synchro options. However, the problem I see with Torque is that it is typically only useful in combination with Union Hanger, and a monster that can special summon itself in some capacity. If you draw it, I can only imagine the groan and response from the player, and overall using it with Union Hanger seems to be inefficient relative to the principal strategy of the deck, summoning ABC. Also, the extra deck in this particular build can be rather tight. Overall, if I were to add a synchro strategy to the deck, I would use a card like Plague Spreader Zombie instead. Scramble Union is largely a backup card in case an ABC Dragon Buster was not able to jump out of the way or was destroyed during your turn when it did not have the capacity to do so, and the material used to summon it remains banished. The graveyard effect would have been light years better if it grabbed a light machine instead of a light machine normal or union monster. Overall, I feel this was an unfortunate design decision because I really can't see Scramble Union being splashed into other decks, even if this were the case. Unfortunately for me, the card does not do enough to be worth running. I feel that if one wants to run a union tech monster, 
Heavy mech support armor is superior to torque because it has some utility when in the hand with the ability to special summon one union monster in the graveyard. Also, its union equip effect is rather effective at masking the equip monster from being targeted, which protects the equip monster from a large number of popular removal effects. However, despite thinking support armor is better than torque, I think there are better choices overall for the deck, so I do not run any copies. Union Hanger is one of the most important field spells in the game. First, it nets a free search when activated, allowing you to add one Light Machine Union Monster from the deck to the hand, which will obviously be A, B, or C depending on the given circumstances, and this search effect is great because it inherently sets you up. You don't even need an A, B, or C initially in your hand because Union Hanger will get it for you. Second, it further thins the deck and speeds ABC summoning by attaching a Light Machine Union from the deck to a summoned Light Machine Union monster. Not surprisingly, this deck runs much smoother in speed and efficiency when Union Hanger is on the field. It is not difficult to produce the conditions for an ABC Dragon Buster in a single turn when Union Hanger is directing traffic on the field. Run three copies as long as three copies are allowed. However, the psychological double-edged sword of Hanger is that its overall ability may have induced some players to depend too much upon it. Finally, the big boss himself, ABC Dragon Buster. Not surprisingly, Dragon Buster is the superstar of the deck, boasting 3,000 attack points and a quick play target banish ability for any card on the field by discarding a card from the hand of the graveyard. The interesting side effect of this effect is that there are times when you will discard an A, B, or C to the graveyard, joining it with two remaining partners in the graveyard, giving you the ability to put another ABC on the field. Well, at least until Link Summoning comes out. ABC is even more dangerous during the opponent's turn, where it can not only interrupt the opponent's plays, but almost participate in a banish then run away strategy, so to speak, by tagging out to special summon three banished light machine union monsters with different names, commonly giving you the material to summon another ABC Dragon Buster during your next turn, or a strong defensive wall, especially if Union Hanger is on the field. While you certainly can get away with running two copies, I like running three. As stated at the beginning of this deck build, I believe the more popular XZ build is too one-dimensional for the XZ monsters that are used are typically not significant threats, for Castell is probably the biggest fear the opponent may have, and Castell isn't that big of a threat. So smart opponents almost always save their defensive resources to deal with ABC Dragon Buster, because it can't jump out of the way when it's summoned during your turn. Therefore, I believe to take the deck to the next level against the existing and coming meta, the deck must produce multiple threats, not just ABC Dragon Buster. Fortunately, the deck being comprised of light machines makes this task relatively straightforward. Early in the deck evolution of ABC, two different strategies emerged. XZ Summoning and Cyber Infinity Access. Due to the speed associated with XZ Summoning and the ability to put Dragon Buster on the field first turn more consistently than the Cyber Dragon Infinity version, not surprisingly, the XZ version became much more popular competitively. However, now with Dryden's and other interrupters being more prevalent, in my opinion, that overall speed advantage has lost its significance over the versatility advantage provided by Cyber Infinity Access. With that said, I feel it's important to go deeper in the Cyber Infinity version than just throwing in some Galaxy Soldiers and some Transmodifies and calling it a day. For the second versatile element, I run two copies of Galaxy Soldier. I don't like running three copies because in my experience has a tendency to clog, but I also have a history of just being plain unlucky with Galaxy Soldier. Three copies of Cyber Dragon and three copies of Cyber Dragon Dry to significantly increase the ability to summon Cyber Dragon Infinity, putting pressure on Dryden's dimensional barriers and other interruptions. In addition, I feel it's important to have a strong main deck option for the deck as well, and fortunately two copies of Machina or Machina Fortress fill that role quite well. Not only is Fortress a strong 2500 attacker that gets to destroy a card on the field when it is destroyed by battle, allowing it to suicide itself to remove problem monsters, but it is also a pain in the neck when it comes to being targeted, for it can dump a card from the opponent's hand as punishment for targeting it, making it more costly to remove from the field. Finally, it can hasten the summons of Dragon Buster by moving A, B, or C pieces from the hand to the graveyard. The final monster I like running, due to all of the discarding the deck, is one copy of Performage Trick Clown to help make extra rank 4 plays more efficiently. 
For the remainder of the spells, obviously I run three copies of Terraforming due to the incredible importance of acquiring Union Hanger. I run one copy of Regeki for field clearance, one copy of Soul Charge for revival and extended playmaking, and one copy of Upstart for speed. I do not see Soul Charge in this deck very much, which is strange because it does not need the battle phase to cause some serious damage. I suppose one could make the argument that Soul Charge fell out of favor in ABC decks because everyone started running Pot of Desires for increased speed, and because Pot of Desires banished a bunch of your monsters, there was this idea that, well, Soul Charge's efficiency has dropped significantly because I just banished six of my monsters because I activated Desires. Unfortunate, I think Soul Charge is a very quality card in ABCs. In addition, I run three copies of Instant Fusion, to assist and augment Cyber Dragon Infinity Summoning, and to provide Norden support, in addition to putting a Panzer Dragon on the field if you need to get rid of one of those annoying Imperial Iron Walls that's preventing ABC Dragon Buster from hitting the field, and two copies of Forbidden Chalice to deal with Whip Tails and other annoying monsters, in addition to powering up my own monsters when necessary. Another card I expect to see in this deck more than I do is one copy of Foolish Burial, for there are a number of quality dump targets. A, B, C, Machina Fortress, and Performer Mage Trick Clown. Foolish Burial is actually very effective in this deck at speeding Dragon Buster summoning. Finally, due to the addition of the Cyber Dragons, I like running one copy of Overload Fusion to summon Rampage Dragon, which not only can help inflict massive damage, if not outright end the duel, but can also dump A, B, or C into the graveyard, setting up Dragon Buster summons. And typically, worst case scenario, if you're not seeing your Cyber Dragons, you can just discard Overload Fusion for ABC's effect. While I do not run it, another interesting choice for this deck is one copy of Magnet Reverse, to bring out either a Cyber Dragon Infinity to suck up an opponent's monster and provide some level of negation, a Dragon Buster to cause some havoc, or even a Panzer Dragon. The fact that Reverse is a quick play is actually kind of nasty. You can summon a Buster and use Buster's effect to remove an opponent's card during their turn, or you could put Panzer Dragon on the field as a wall that will take something with it. However, the reason I don't run one copy of Magnet Reverse is... In testing, I just saw it early too much, and it wasn't effective. Maybe if somebody had better luck than I do, it would be more effective for them. For replacing Overload Fusion with Magnet Reverse is definitely an option. Finally, for the traps, I run three copies of Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. For when you have a deck that doesn't mind discarding, like this one, it can be a vicious effect, interrupting your opponent's play, or setting their next turn back a step. Rounding out the traps, I run one copy of Torrential Tribute. Tribute can interrupt the opponent while producing minimum detriment to you, as A, B, or C going to the graveyard is not a big deal, and because you are typically going to be activating tribute during your opponent's turn, Buster can just hop out of the way. The remainder of my extra deck is as followed. Obviously, the two Panzer Dragons and the one Elder Entity Norden for the instant fusion summoning. Again, not surprisingly, the two Cyber Dragon Novas and their respective Cyber Dragon Infinities one Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon for Overload Fusion, and then four Rank 4s. I believe that one Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer, one Diamond Direwolf, one Bujinki Sukiyomi, and one Gagaga Ga Samurai. In the end, I think the meta ABC deck still focuses too much on getting ABC Dragon Buster out as fast as possible, with no real backup plan. This strategy puts huge pressure on Union Hanger acquisition because, looking at the common meta skeleton, it is difficult to get the necessary resources into the graveyard for ABC without Hanger. The deck also runs a lot of, in a sense, front runner or break even cards, where if it does not open strong, the player might as well scoop because most of the cards do not facilitate coming back. This build attempts to provide multiple avenues towards victory, and also provides some means to produce a comeback in case Union Hanger does not find its way into your opening hand. Granted, this versatility does come at the price of some level of speed, but I feel the in the current meta as it stands, the increase in versatility far outweighs the minor loss of speed. Unfortunately for ABC, Link Summoning will have a somewhat negative effect on the overall fluidity of the deck, where you can drop one or two XZ monsters, and then resummon either one or even a second ABC Dragon Buster, and then just go for the OTK. However, this hit is not as bad as it is for a lot of other decks. Well, that is my ABC deck. Thank you for your attention.
and your time, I'm out.